Dear friends, hello once again at our highly anticipated next lecture. We are thrilled to have you join us. Looking forward to a great session with all of you. Today, section 11 is specifically dedicated most likely to one of the crucial elements of our business, franchising, which is integral to our overall success and growth. In general, franchising has always been our focus. Today, I want to share insights, thoughts, and conclusions I've gathered over 12 years about the franchising system, including details, packages, and features of our Dodo franchise. We take pride in being a franchising company and value the experiences we've gained. These insights have shaped our approach and made us successful in the franchising industry. Where do I start? From the fact that franchising is truly one of the great inventions in business. This is a system that enables you to create, scale your business, create business in partnership when a large number of participants, entrepreneurs are united together. And this particular system came into existence during the middle of the 19th century. It was created by an entrepreneur named Singer, who was the creator and inventor of sewing machines such as these innovative devices. In 1851, Mr. Singer initiated a distribution system that eventually evolved into the foundation for future franchising, which started to actively expand and develop in the United States. What action did Singer take? Cars were sold in numerous countries all around the globe. Here you can see postcards that feature clients who are car users from various countries in general. It was a significant breakthrough in the business world at that time when the product became widely spread, when the world had not yet undergone much development. And all this happened thanks to the franchising system, because simply selling cars was impossible. It was necessary to provide service. And then the company Zynga began to transfer to its dealers, distributors the rights to service, to represent the interests of the company to service the machines, and in fact, this became the prototype of the future franchising because entrepreneurs were independent legal entities, essentially independent entrepreneurs, but who entered into a partnership with Zinger Company. And then franchising began to actively develop, acquiring completely different forms. Franchising is often associated with the food industry. Zinger is an example of a product service model where both the product and the service are included in the offering and sold to customers. And there are just grocery franchises. These are retail networks, many of them, you know, many of which operate on a franchise basis and are essentially entrepreneurs in specific local markets, work under the brand name of one brand and sell products of this brand. Franchising service, we will talk about him today. Actually, our company is engaged in service franchising, and we have been doing this for 12 years. Soon it will be 13 years. On this day, I have a strong desire to share the important conclusions and observations that I have personally made and find significant. In general, our company was initially conceived as a franchising company when it was first established by our visionary founder. From the start, we built not just a network of pizzerias, but a network of pizzerias that would grow through franchising. This is service franchising because we essentially transfer the model to our partners for the provision of a specific service that they can offer to their customers. Today, I will discuss it once more. Well, in fact, I have already presented this slide in previous lectures. The concept was to establish a more effective competitive framework by leveraging technologies, creating a more efficient pizzeria, a more efficient unit economy, and then scaling this model by attracting capital and entrepreneurial energy partners in order to scale quickly and create a large business that would be highly efficient and competitive in the market, thus ensuring long-term success and profitability. Why choose franchising? A lot of individuals inquire whether it's feasible to establish their own corporate pizzerias. Perhaps it is lucrative. What is the reason behind the prevalence of the franchising model in the general catering industry, particularly in large networks? Apart from development speed, what are the advantages? Franchising enables rapid expansion without in-depth market study or substantial capital requirement, as it involves partnering with a large number of entrepreneurs instead of having to secure a significant amount of funding on your own. There is a question, 
why do large retail corporate networks exist? For example, Walmart, Aushan, X5, these are the well-known brands Piatroshka, Perekrestok, which play a significant role in the retail industry. There are numerous large retail chains across the globe, but they are all part of the global QSR industry. It is important to note that QSR stands for quick service restaurants, which are fast food establishments with a widespread network and a focus on mass catering services. All of them primarily work on a franchise basis. I want to remind you that currently around 80% of McDonald's restaurants operate on a franchise basis and the percentage is even higher, specifically 85%. Burger King aims to increase the figure to approximately 98%. Based on the most recent information I received, it was at that level. Additionally, there is a network known as Subway, which is not affiliated with any specific restaurant. All these small Subway snack bars operate 100% based on a franchise system. What is the reason for the prevalence of the franchising model in the field of network mass catering? Look, in order to explain, let's take a look at where our business is located. I observe that our business is positioned in the middle of the production of fast-moving consumer goods, commonly referred to as FMCG goods, which encompass food products and retail. These goods are sold in retail because we are the actual producers of such everyday demand goods, specifically food, but it is manufactured on-site within a designated restaurant. And it is imperative that we provide our clients, our guests, with the same level of quality and stability that people have come to expect when purchasing goods from retail establishments. So no matter which point he comes to, out of hundreds, out of thousands, he wants to get the same quality, the same service. But at the same time, this production is decentralized with a large number of small productions distributed this business is distinguished by its excellent on-site management, as it not only involves the production of food, but also requires the provision of service and the creation of a welcoming atmosphere for its customers. And all this food is produced on-site and made to order. If food items are produced in large quantities at factories, then they are sent to the warehouse and subsequently transported to the stores for distribution and sale. We are currently producing at the precise moment when our guest wants our pizza to be fresh or coffee to be hot and steaming. We need to take into consideration the significant spikes in demand because the demand is not evenly distributed throughout the day and can experience powerful fluctuations. Managing a substantial quantity of microprocessors, establishing an atmosphere, delivering service, guaranteeing stability and quality, necessitates quite complex and sophisticated management. And therefore, it is very important to have quality management on site, quality team building and guest interaction. That is the reason why the quick service restaurant QSR industry operates in a widespread franchising format. This is because utilizing a franchising system makes it easier and more efficient to address this task. In every local market and city, there is an individual owner who is dedicated to ensuring the stability of quality and the overall success of the business, which depends on, in reality, quite a bit, whether or not our guests are satisfied with the service they receive. And this necessitates attention, focus. In reality, it is simpler to guarantee through collaborations with local entrepreneurs. Due to this rationale, it is highly logical that a significant catering operation functions efficiently by utilizing a franchising system. In general, what our partners receive, what our franchisees receive, what our representation of franchising products represents when I mentioned service franchise. What is this? Look, this is not merely some informational product that we transmit to our partner entrepreneurs. It is much more than that, with valuable insights and practical knowledge. This is a complete franchising ecosystem. I am frequently asked about our main product, whether it is the franchise itself or the pizza that we offer as part of our franchise model. There is no answer. In fact, it is quite obvious that our main product is pizza. That is to say, our existence is defined by the presence of pizza. The network that sells 
creates and delivers service, atmosphere, and joy to our guests, as well as integrates our franchises into this production and creation ecosystem, brings immeasurable happiness and satisfaction to all the individuals involved. Our product is a complete franchising ecosystem. What does she represent herself? There is a pizzeria located in a certain, let's say, city N. There is a franchise, its owner, there is a guest, there is a management company, such a chain. Creating VAR, what's it like next? The task of the management company is to establish such a management system. This will guarantee an efficient and profitable unit economy for optimal performance and financial success. Our franchise partner is making an investment in this specific location. Capital is in charge of managing and operating the pizzeria, handling all aspects of its day-to-day -day operations. Ensuring the stability of quality is maintained for our valuable clients. The most crucial task in our business is to ensure that our guests choose us. They are attracted to our attractive concept, satisfied with the prices and taste, and we consistently meet their demand, which is why they prefer us over other options available to them. In this system, there are external ones, participants who are included in our such a partnership. The system, it is actually the manufacturers with whom we create our products. They are the ones who supply us with the necessary ingredients. The management company ensures and creates a QC system for our client to visit any pizzeria that is part of various franchises and receive the product he anticipates. And also all of us together and our partners who in fact introduce our guests to the brand every day. And we create a brand that our client recognizes. And at some point the brand becomes a value. Yep. Uh, this is a large ecosystem that consists of a large number of participants. This is our product. This is not only the knowledge base that we have conveyed and shared with our partner. In order to expand into a new market, we strategically launch a pizzeria in collaboration with our partners while simultaneously initiating the development of our franchising ecosystem, which eventually proves to be highly valuable and instrumental in our growth and success. And the larger the number of participants involved in this ecosystem, the greater the benefits that all participants in this system receive, including customers who have the opportunity to purchase the product at more affordable and competitive prices in the market. Given that we have merged a lot, the quantity of entrepreneurs provided us with substantial amounts of purchases, and we had the capability to establish a logistic system. Our partners make payments to the management company, referred to as royalty, in exchange for utilizing this system, leveraging our extensive knowledge and expertise, and capitalizing on the strength and reputation of our brand. In reality, who exactly is a franchisee for us? On the previous slide, you had the opportunity to observe this ecosystem, at the core of which is a highly intricate and interdependent value chain specifically designed to cater to the needs of the end customer. And you are aware of it frequently. We have received information that individuals who partner with our franchise are referred to as franchise buyers. We make reference to the concept of selling a franchise. Actually, I believe that we do. This term should be excluded from the lexicon. It is not frequently pronounced by us. We do not sell a franchise. We are looking for partners. What does sell mean? Sell refers to the act of giving away. It involves giving away a product. And in fact, let's not worry about it. And once more, there will be a buyer-seller relationship. And in this case, we do not sell franchises. We are searching for entrepreneurs who are interested in joining us. In partnership, conduct business in the long term, create value in the long term. For our guests, it is a completely different approach. That is the way we should think and communicate with our potential business partners, specifically with our franchisees. You know, we frequently mention our franchises primarily referred to as partners, specifically to highlight that we, together we take risks, together we engage in business activities. Because commencing a franchise is not just a purchase for an entrepreneur. It is not merely a purchase of something. It is a conscious risk that you are willingly undertaking business with a specific company and together she is prepared to do it for a long period. 
Thus, I implore each and every individual to omit the phrase selling a franchise from our lexicon, as the words we use have a profound impact on our thinking. We do not sell a franchise. We are looking for partners with whom we will create a cool product together. Why is it very important to us who will become our partner? It appears evident, but I will emphasize, look closely, because franchising from a business perspective is akin to a long-lasting and committed marriage. These are very long-term enduring relationships that are quite challenging to extricate oneself from. And when you are together, if you imagine a marriage, you create a family together with a person. If children appear, then this is a very strong bond. Therefore, it is extremely important to us to know who will be conducting business with us. It is important to us because we are creating one product. It is important to us if we create one product, and this product is a service. It is very closely related to people, to the team. It is extremely crucial for us that our partner shares our values and possesses a similar culture to ours. It is crucial that he accepts and shares these values. Perhaps he has never reflected on it, but it is of utmost importance that if he decides to come, he wholeheartedly embraces the values and culture in which he will be working. The reason behind our ability to create a unified experience for our guests is because we understand that the success of a pizzeria and the success of a partnership enterprise are crucial determinants. What is the quality of the franchise or a specific partner? It's an important question. Look, this is what I think. A competent partner has the capability to enhance even a weak concept in specific markets by applying enthusiasm and a creative approach, thereby maximizing its potential for success. A negative partner has the potential to completely destroy even the most outstanding concept, regardless of its association with a highly recognized brand. Many examples like this. I'll give an example, let's say McDonald's, you know, a very strong concept, a very strong brand. So McDonald's had a multitude of cases when they made mistakes with a partner and then there was a protracted and intricate story of divorce leading to their eventual exit and separation. Suppose the initial instance of McDonald's establishment in France during which the restaurants were unclean, the service was sluggish and the service was poor. The main company could not do anything with the French partner for a long time. In the end, they terminated the contract and changed partners. There have been improvements. At present, France is considered one of the prosperous global markets for McDonald's. Nevertheless, once again, I will make my way back to one of the Zen parables that I hold dear to my heart. What is more important, concept or partner? You can't say that because both the partner and the concept separately are like cotton on one palm something that doesn't exist. Hence, only the combination of a cool partner and a good concept provides an incredible result, which is truly remarkable and surpasses all expectations. Franchises play an equally important role in the success of their work, contributing as much as the concept itself does to the overall achievement. Now, let's move on to the profile of a person who would be an ideal franchise partner for our successful business. I will make a statement that at this moment and for the previous 10 minutes, I am primarily discussing our experience, our approach, the way we approach, and the way we perceive franchising. Successful franchise partner profile. First, answer the question, what exactly? On the topic of entrepreneurship. From time to time, I come across caustic comments in various articles suggesting that individuals who started their entrepreneurial journey by venturing into franchising are not considered genuine entrepreneurs. They appear to be entering into some sort of conditional, differently wrapped employment. Entrepreneurs who come up with novel ideas and innovations. The answer, of course, is a resounding no. The French are entrepreneurs who have diverse competencies, unique perspectives, and a profound understanding of their strengths and capabilities. This is one. Someone knows how to come up with and develop concepts. Someone knows how to create retail teams in a very cool and impressive manner and develop the network effectively. Attracting investments, team building, promotion in local markets. 
And all of this necessitates a considerable amount of entrepreneurial skills, a substantial entrepreneurial approach. Also, entrepreneurs who participate in franchising are, I would say, pragmatic entrepreneurs who are frequently experienced, who have already started businesses and desire to minimize product risks. When it comes to product risks, they want to ensure that the model they are launching has every chance and opportunity of being successful and achieving the desired outcome. There is a venture business when you introduce a completely new product that the market is unfamiliar with. There are businesses that are engaged in the production of goods, services that have long been known and understood by everyone. However, once again, the market is highly competitive and the successful execution relies on the level of creativity in the strategy. Thus, franchising is a form of partnership involving a division of competencies between the parties involved. The management company responds. Partners have their own mission. The mission of partners is to ensure the implementation of quality, to succeed in the local market, to achieve success in the local market. The mission of the management company is to provide a competitive product and efficient business for the franchise in the long term. I believe that when individuals gather, they have the ability to generate enormous and magnificent endeavors. Tell me, rockets in space, when people launch them, it is not done by one person, it is done by a huge number of people who have come together. In fact, franchising is a collaborative partnership that plays a crucial role in our world and aligns perfectly with our philosophy and values. Here you can see entrepreneur Vladimir Goretsky in this photo. We had the chance to shake hands with Vladimir Goretsky in August of 2012. Vladimir is an extremely creative and bright entrepreneur with a remarkable talent for innovation. He initiated the establishment of his own pizzeria in Smolensk, which he named Toro Pizza and started operating as the owner. I had a blog and I witnessed a substantial number of intriguing ideas in his blog, Innovations. And once I wrote, I don't even remember who wrote to whom first, but we agreed to meet him in St. Petersburg. Get acquainted, we got acquainted, talked, and in the end decided that it would be cooler to develop together, that together one-on-one -on -one will be three. And in point of fact, that is precisely how Vladimir came into our network and is currently one of our largest and most successful partners, without a doubt. In my opinion, I believe that he does not have any regrets whatsoever when it comes to this decision that he made. In fact, at this very moment, I have a strong desire to delve into the topic of partner development and shed light on how aspiring entrepreneurs become part of our network as partners, starting off as small-scale business owners. We were all very young and business partners can be classified into various groups based on their size and other factors. Each stage, when you have one pizzeria, requires certain skills. When you have 10 pizzerias, when your network has grown, it requires the development of an entrepreneur as a businessman, as a manager. Because managing one pizzeria is one task, you can manage it manually. When you have 10 pizzerias, it is already a small network. You need to establish regular network level management. With 30 pizzerias, it's different, a completely different scale of business, a whole new level. When you have 100 pizzerias, it is already a serious big business and this growth from one to let us say 100 pizzerias and beyond is associated with the growth of franchising, the growth of an entrepreneur as a person, as a human being and of course as a manager because in order to manage 100 pizzerias, the approach that you used for 30 pizzerias does not work. Therefore, it becomes necessary to adapt and develop new strategies to effectively handle the increased scale and complexity of operations. But there is the next stage. It is master franchising, when the partner actually develops the entire market, when he is not only focused on developing his own retail, when he is responsible for both the supply system and the brand development in a specific market. In addition, he also commences sub-franchising which signifies that he possesses the capability to have franchise partners in a particular local market. Currently, uh, we do not have master franchising in our business yet, 
By the way, we do not have master franchising in our business yet. There is no such major partner in any market in a separate country that has already commenced the process of launching master franchising operations. But it is necessary to understand that master franchising, which includes the word franchising, will be for a partner who was engaged in retail business, always a new business. To develop a franchising system, collaborate with partners, and oversee pizzerias is necessary. These are still separate businesses. We will need to transfer the franchise of the franchise to our company, meaning we need to transfer competencies, knowledge, and some support on how to manage the franchise network. So, you see, these transitions from one level of management to another management are a challenge, and not everyone possesses the necessary skills to effectively handle it. That is, we have numerous instances where exceptional entrepreneurs at the level of five to seven pizzerias have managed them excellently, or three pizzerias. As the business grew, when it was necessary to build a management team, delegate and franchise to the entrepreneur who started the business, he needed to change his role in order to adapt to the increasing scale of the business. That is, he undergoes a transition from the role of an operational manager to a more strategic role, namely that of an investor. Not all cope with this transition. Our task as a management company is to help support, but it depends primarily on the specific person. What takes place afterwards takes place in the event that the partner is unable to proceed to the next stage due to certain circumstances, which is a common occurrence. He either discontinues the development process or faces the possibility of going out of business. This business is available for purchase being acquired by a more efficient franchise that has the ability to consolidate and manage a large business. There is no tragedy in this situation. This is simply a natural process of business growth that occurs within a specific market. If initially the entrepreneur is focused on operational management, then as the business grows larger, if he is able to expand, he gradually transitions more towards strategic management and assumes the responsibilities of an owner, regarding which I will provide further details later today. It is of utmost importance for us that our partners share our values at all stages of the process, that they are actively involved and invested, because it can be argued that when an entrepreneur manages and oversees a single pizzeria, they are fully engaged and dedicated to our brand. This is why we consider them our valued Dodo representative. And when there are already 100 pizzerias, he practically does not appear in pizzerias. He possesses a team, he possesses managers. However, simultaneously, it is still crucial for us that even the shareholder of this network guarantees quality, service, and culture in their business operations. This is the role of the owner. Therefore, it is important, despite the fact that the partner is no longer involved in operational management, but the company's values, customer orientation, openness, they influence the making of strategic decisions, who manages this business, and in this role, the partner owner as a shareholder. What is the process of developing partners? In situations where there are large markets and we opt to allocate the entire market to a partner, our primary objective is to search for experienced partners who can effectively collaborate with us in those markets. Those who have already gone through a certain path prior to joining our business, they possess experience in financial management, management of various network structures. And in Russia, we initially worked with entrepreneurs, many of whom lacked experience. And let's assume that is the case. Currently, Drinkit is in the process of active development in Moscow, Russia. The market in Moscow is open and presents an opportunity to open a coffee shop. Many energetic entrepreneurs and enthusiasts are approaching us, expressing their desire to open a coffee shop. And our objective is to gradually assist our partners in their growth, because the majority of the items that are presented to us demonstrate such strong ambitions and goals. They aspire to build a substantial business but they require development as managers. In fact, what specific approaches should we employ? Based on my understanding, they prove to be effective for the development of entrepreneurs.
the most crucial aspect to consider is that we must provide support, but at the same time, we need entrepreneurs to grow themselves and become independent. We need to maintain independence. What do I want to say? There is a rather rude phrase that I often say that the salvation of the drowning is the business of the drowning themselves. And our approach to franchising was such that we never wanted to create any form of infantilism or foster a sense of immaturity among our partners, as it would undermine the professionalism and mutual trust we strive to maintain. What is this? When we initiated the first pizzerias, a few partners informed us, look, can you dispatch a startup team that will arrive, inaugurate a pizzeria on our behalf, rectify everything and depart? Everything will demonstrate the process of how to do it. However, we became your partners and acquired a franchise to expand our business. And even, you know, some initial cases, we made an attempt to send such startup teams. However, at a certain point in time, we came to the realization that in this way, we are actually doing more harm than good for our partners. We assume responsibility for the business from them. We endorse this mindset that someone else can handle the business because we communicate to our partners that they should adopt our model, but still retain their entrepreneurial spirit. We are simply providing you with a tool but you must acquire the knowledge of how to utilize it on your own. If you do not make mistakes, if you do not take responsibility for it, you will never learn. This is, it appears to me, the act of raising children. If you do everything on behalf of the child, no positive outcome will occur. You need to make mistakes. You need to step out of your comfort zone. And that's why we said, friends, look, you start a business on your own. You are entrepreneurs. If you succeed, great. We will always support you, but we will not do anything for you because you have to learn. And this approach, supporting simultaneously and maintaining independence, has led to the fact that we have grown or helped to grow. It would be more correct to say because all of our partners have grown up themselves through their own efforts and dedication. Very cool partners. And many of our partners really started with one pizzeria, practically without experience and built big businesses. We all studied together. We built a culture of growth. When you accept criticism, when you are open to feedback, we nurtured an environment of learning and improvement, which enabled us to thrive and achieve our goals. And a lot of our entrepreneurs have truly built extremely, extremely large businesses. What is the role of a partner at such a mature stage? If at the launch stage, the partner is 200% involved in the business, Many of our partners themselves delivered pizza, stayed overnight in pizzerias. Then, when the business grows and works on its own, there is a team. What is the role of the partner in this scenario? And in this context, the role of the owner is of utmost importance and cannot be underestimated in any way. Even when the business is already constructed, even when we possess a robust brand in Russia, it is significant to us that our pizzerias are owned by a substantial number of individuals who are concerned. Because you have the capability to be an owner of various things, you can indicate that the activity generates some profit for me. And all right, I am content with that. Is it possible for me to become the owner of a place that I desire to be incredibly cool in my pizzeria so that both my children and my friends have the ability to order pizza there and so that I do not feel any shame or embarrassment about it? And above all, as a management company, we demand quality assurance from each owner because owning a pizzeria or a future coffee shop, once again, beverages currently at the initial stage, it will not be long before the time when drink partners forget how to make espresso, but they will come someday when there will be a large amount of caffeine. Someday it will happen and we will be fully prepared for that moment when it finally arrives. And our partners at Drink It will only prepare either espresso or cappuccino on a single occasion every six months, without any exceptions. Thus, having a pizzeria or a coffee shop is not only about owning, but also about taking on responsibility. This is also our responsibility. It is crucial to ensure quality. And if our owner cannot ensure quality, then he must be promptly replaced. Because it's a normal process. All owners who cannot provide work for a pizzeria or coffee shop they go out of business. About pizzerias, going out of business. Precisely without any losses, with profit. 
Due to the fact that our pizzerias are presently situated in markets where we have achieved success, they possess high liquidity and owning them equates to having a valuable asset that generates income effectively. But again, this is also a responsibility because we are all in a unified chain of creating value for our guest, for our client, who is the most important in our business. Is it necessary for all partners to share the same values? This is a question that I heard from business developers who are concerned about the presence of partners who violate our values. It is important for us to ensure that our partners align with our values in order to maintain a strong and ethical business environment. They come across subpar service, subpar culture, and subpar treatment of employees in pizzerias, which contributes to their dissatisfaction with the overall experience. Look, big business implies, not implies, but inevitably leads to the fact that there is a certain number of individuals, participants, who entered this business with something random, without any specific plan or intention, purely by chance or coincidence, without any predetermined strategy or deliberate choice. It is not possible to avoid. During the franchise selection stage, it is not possible to carry out any partner test to ascertain whether the partner will meet our expectations. However, the responsibilities of the management company involve establishing a system that makes it extremely difficult to disregard any of our principles. And in the event that an individual does not accept these approaches in any way, then he or she must naturally and inevitably leave the system without any further recourse or alternative options available to them. There has to be some natural selection, yes. Definitely, we want all our partners to share our values, but it is impossible to check, as I have already mentioned, with a test. It is impossible to do so. How to select partners. Learn how to choose partners effectively to ensure a higher number of partners who meet our expectations and find a profile of a successful partner that aligns with our goals and objectives. Look, in the first place, the larger the market, the more discussions we have with the partner if we are not discussing Russia or Kazakhstan at the moment, where else can we open a pizzeria? Currently, in Drinkity, it is Moscow. Therefore, the more market we explore with a partner, we have already reached an agreement in Drinkity that our partners will expand in a major Russian metropolis such as Perm and Rostov-on-Don. These cities offer great potential for our pizzeria business, and we are excited about the prospects of establishing a presence there and they take on the entire responsibility for closing the entire market. So it's a big market. Or we at Dodo Pizza uh, are discussing a specific country, a big country. The larger the market, the more manual decision. We need to study our partners very thoroughly. In the green key, we are currently conducting tenders. Partners provide details about themselves, their plans, and the way in which they conducted market research to gain insights. This tells us a lot about people, about the approach, and it is important for us to feel, well, besides just feeling, we need to have a deep conversation, but we also need to understand who and what kind of person, what kind of entrepreneur, where the capital comes from, how it was made, what kind of business, what approach was taken in this business. However, it is still a manual solution. I do not truly perceive any sort of systematic formula present here for determining how we select partners. What do we need to examine? First and foremost, we should focus on the values of an individual. It fits us or it doesn't fit us. Actually, it is extremely important. If an individual cares about their work, if it is significant for them to produce a high quality product, money is not a concern. Naturally, we engage in commerce, but it is crucial to undertake activities that he can take pride in. Next, you must assess the competencies the entrepreneur's ability to manage a large business, their understanding of regular management, and their capacity to delegate tasks effectively. Here you should look. Background, history of the entrepreneur. Naturally, we cannot provide inexperienced entrepreneurs with access to expansive markets due to the significant risks involved. In fact, no testing, no interview will be able to determine whether an entrepreneur will succeed or not. What is the probability of success? In addition to studying experience, the more mistakes an entrepreneur makes, the more experience he has, the better. 
And the third point is capital. Capital is important because it's the fuel for our business. If he is accepted, he exactly matches us in values. He has good experience, but unfortunately, he does not have any capital. He will not have enough fuel to develop any major market. And he can run out of gas during takeoff, causing the engine to stop abruptly and leaving him stranded without power. Therefore, it is important to understand whether there is capital or how likely it is that this entrepreneur will be able to attract capital. However, however, let us now proceed to discuss the concept of mass franchising, which refers to our readiness to work with small entrepreneurs, particularly in situations where we do not have a track record or prior experience. And the way we chose partners in Russia, specifically in Dodo, is because it represents the most relevant example of working with a large number of partners for us. Initially, we created a specific auto filter. What exactly is an auto filter? We are unable to comprehend in the course of the interview, the level of passion an individual has for the business, their level of commitment to this business, and their level of willingness to fully immerse themselves. Thus, we established an automatic filter as a means to facilitate the launch and establishment of Dodo Pizza in Russia, ensuring efficient operations and seamless customer experience. When we initiated, it was imperative to journey to Siktivkar, undergo training, work independently in a pizzeria, acquire the skill of making dough, and perform floor cleaning tasks. It was crucial for an individual to comprehend, to experience this enterprise directly at their fingertips, accept our development rules, accept all principles of openness because many entrepreneurs did not want to work with us. Because we have openness, open revenue, we have open indicators within the network. In fact, this filter rejected a lot of individuals, but it is clear that through this filter, there were partners with whom it was not possible to develop the business then natural selection occurred because someone couldn't do it. Uh, he sold the pizza restaurant, new partners arrived, and they purchased pizzerias from the existing partners who were already involved in the business. We have incredibly successful cases of partners who came and purchased existing pizzerias from unsuccessful partners and immediately increased revenues and built large networks, leading to a significant boost in their business and establishing a strong presence in the market. A few words about the connection between management companies and partners. This is highly significant regarding partners and management companies. To initiate, I will start by elucidating the core formula of our business, which is the franchise business model. Our success is partner success, generally all that we do. It is imperative that we pass through this mantra because by doing so, we can ensure the success of the management company in achieving its goals. Our partners will want to collaborate with us, they will invest, they will develop the network, they will trust us, and it will be easier for us to make some of the most difficult decisions with their support and guidance. However, comrades, please take note, this equation is not fully comprehensive without the inclusion of the second component. The essence of the matter resides in the fact that the success of partners is intricately tied to the happiness and satisfaction of the guests they serve. It is imperative to comprehend that certain decisions, which may initially seem to align with the interests of partners, can actually run counter to the desires and needs of the very guests they strive to please and accommodate. Because there are also contented employees who manufacture products, and without them, there will be no contented guests enjoying the services provided by the company. And frequently, there can be a certain natural conflict of interests or a conflict between the management company and its partners which arises due to differing priorities, objectives, or perspectives. This is a typical and common situation, and let me transparently break it down and provide a thorough explanation so that when we encounter it again in the future, it will be of great help and assistance in understanding and dealing with similar scenarios that may arise. What is the conflict about? The conflict is in the fact that the management company has a longer term perspective of the business. Furthermore, it is worth noting that in reality, significant partners progressively cultivate precisely the identical viewpoint over time. What is this long term perspective? He discusses the importance of considering employees, guests, and of course, business efficiency. But occasionally, depending on the market circumstances, we must also take into account the market situation. 
it is imperative for us to fully understand that the guest holds the utmost importance as the primary source for the very existence of our business enterprise. And we must make decisions in certain moments for the benefit of the guest at the cost of the business. This is a long-term view. If we lose a guest, we lose business. In the short term, it may seem necessary to act in the interests of the business. Resolve conflicts with partners, explain long-term perspective. We have an obligation to solve them. We have an obligation to explain our long-term perspective. They commence adopting this long-term perspective because they comprehend that if the business attains success in the long run, the asset they possess will consistently retain its value, worth, and continue to be a valuable resource for them in the future. And let's assume it was a difficult task for partners to explain investments in the brand or the decision to leave aggregators for independent operations. Because it does not bring results now, but it increases, it will bring results in the future. It definitely increases the capitalization of their business. This is a common conflict and you just need to work on it. Actually, how can we resolve these conflicts effectively? Look, the utmost powerful tool for resolving conflict situations with partners is openness and transparency. This is common sense, transparency. We do not hide anything. There are no hidden decisions. Even if the decisions are not popular, we explain their logic. And if we believe that they should be implemented, we definitely implement them. We listen to partners, but we cannot always agree with them. However, we make an effort to explain our logic to them striving to provide as much explanation as possible. That is why at a certain point we established such a collegial body, a consultative council consisting of partners. This decision was of utmost importance in the development of our franchising system, and it stands as one of the most significant milestones in our journey. At a certain juncture, guidance from partners will commence to emerge on the markets. Presently, the board of partners solely exists in Russia, with no presence in other countries at this time. Honestly, I don't know if we have it in Kazakhstan right now. If not, I think he will definitely appear. The Council of Partners, it is important to mention, is not a legislative body in the business sector. The Board of Partners is unable to state that we have made a decision in this manner. We desire to cast a vote and, for example, modify certain aspects of the brand message. No. The Partners Council is still comprised of representatives of the franchisees who directly assume the responsibility of communicating with the management company. The management company immerses itself deeply in partners' decision logic, as larger businesses make it more challenging for partners to comprehend. Because if prior to uh, and partners comprehended everything, at present business has become more intricate and challenging. Marketing is an incredibly massive story. Marketing is an incredibly huge, huge story of immense proportions. At present, there is already a large professional team. In fact, it is extremely challenging for all partners to comprehend everything. Partners should help solve this. This is an organ that can influence our decisions. We definitely need to listen to our partners. However, similar to the responsibility of a product owner, you listen to partners, you listen to clients, but ultimately you make a decision for which you assume responsibility. It may not correspond to the opinion of the partners, but it is imperative that you take full responsibility and demonstrate unwavering bravery and strength in order to effectively shoulder this weighty responsibility that has been entrusted to you. And it is completely open to explain to partners the logic of why this solution is being implemented if the partner does not support it or has any objections that need addressing in order to ensure a smooth implementation process. What is the secret behind the success of Dota franchising? Look, now there are these conclusions. This is a reflection for a period of 12 years. In my opinion, the key to success lies in having the right partners. We were successful in attracting the appropriate partners, individuals with an entrepreneurial mindset who shared our values and were aligned with our vision for the future growth and success of our venture. Why did we achieve success? Because we have never aggressively marketed or sold franchise opportunities. We have consistently been searching for partners, providing them with information about the business, being transparent about all numbers. And in actuality, openness has given a lot to our business because a large number of partners came to us because they saw the numbers. They came to the pizzerias. And since we had a culture of openness, our partners shared the numbers with them.
and in actuality, they made the conscious decision to become a part of our expansive network. The second most crucial factor of our success is the approach to partners. Our success is partners' success. We are truly focused on our partners' success, but again, we must not forget about our clients because the clients are the most important people. And our approach to partners, relationships, when we both provided support and refrained from pursuing business opportunities at the expense of our partners, which resulted in their growth and development into successful entrepreneurs. And the most important factor, the key factor, is openness. Because a culture of openness, when people do not close themselves off in their business, has allowed partners to exchange information, exchange best solutions. She motivated because when partners saw that someone from another city compared you to their city, it made the results better. It was very motivating because it means I can do the same. And this it inspired and it initiated partners to ask how you achieved it. And this led to an exchange of information. So we set up an additional platform where a substantial amount of content, data and conclusions were generated internally, contributing to our growing repository of valuable information. In fact, our main task is to develop and foster this openness, this exchange in the future, because the truth is that many franchising networks of our competitors or our market colleagues are not fundamentally different or unique. Even the partners of Subway are unaware of the earnings of the Subway located on the next street, as everything is closed and no information is available at this time. Numbers cannot be displayed, creating obstacles for market development in the franchise community. Nobody is scared of this. We're all open. We all experience this power, this synergy. This is an explosive combination. The partners are cool. Relationships are strong, and there is trust with the management company between friend and openness. Well, in fact, the final thing I want to say. Friends, get ready for your questions. Maybe the information I have shared is already known to many, but I wanted to document and preserve some of the important key findings that I have come across. I am hopeful that they will be of assistance in the future. What is of utmost importance for finding future partners? Look, you have the ability to actually make a tremendous and powerful advertisement. If you are interested in franchise opportunities and want to learn more, you can visit franchise.com. There you can see how we talk about our franchise product and discover what Lara Kuzmina did with the team, which is very cool. However, the most important aspect is real cases that demonstrate the success of our franchise. Ultimately, regardless of our words, Success has an inherent allure that cannot be denied or ignored. And if we consider our Russian case, our success in Russia, then it is only a genuine case, characterized by openness, numbers, successful partners. All of these factors contributed to the creation of a boom in Russia. And as a result, our worldwide franchise necessitates genuine cases. That's why the Dubai market is so important to us, and all other markets, show and all other markets. To showcase that our business possesses ample, powerful, competitive advantages to thrive and excel, even in the most fiercely competitive markets, demonstrating our ability to succeed and outperform competitors. Still a case pertaining to Russia. Now we will be put in brackets, because we were always told before that this is still your home market, the market of your own country. Show us how your model works in other markets. By the way, they used to talk about sex in Karnusedor. They talked about sex in car. It's clear why there are successful pizzerias there. But we don't see how pizzerias work in other cities yet. And it was only when we started to achieve success in other cities that it led to such a tremendous boom in our business. Therefore, we require actual cases. However, it is also highly significant to test this product. Because when I discuss the product, I do not just mean attempting the pizza, but also observing this business because emotions and feelings have a very crucial function at every level. I will provide you with an example. We had, in my opinion, a total of three potential partners from Italy. And out of these partners who were truly considering a franchise of a pizzeria from Russia to Italy, two of them are genuine Italians. 
they were greatly inspired after visiting our pizzeria and expressed a strong interest in pursuing the franchise opportunity. One of the entrepreneurs visited a pizzeria in Slovenia, while the second potential partner was in Moscow. They witnessed the impressive coolness of everything, the efficient functionality, and the operation of IT, and this became the primary trigger to initiate negotiations and give serious consideration to the matter at hand. In Italy, ultimately, we were unsuccessful in the final. However, the actual fact speaks volumes. Hence, the Kate showroom in Dubai is also highly significant for us in this location, as it enables us to advance our business globally and progress to the next level of our operations.